let us go, but listen to the teacher. Let it be a joy. Let it be a joy. Let it be. Afternoon, everyone. Today, I want to talk to you about our calling. And I want to talk to you about how important it is that we don't become religious with the things of the Lord. Now, first of all, religion can be defined as belief in and reverence or deep respect to God as the creator of the universe. It's a proper form of worship with an approved pattern of behavior. But see, the problem with this is that many people out there, they see this as solely their relationship with the Lord. And what happens is their actions or their pattern of behavior, they go, they go to church on Sunday, it becomes a ritual. They go to church on Sunday, they, they feel like they've done their bit, and then they go out during the week and they do as they please. And then they wonder why they don't feel on fire for the Lord. And it says in James, faith divorced from deeds is as a corpse, dead and ineffective. See, if we go through a religious process, it's not going to achieve anything. But if we go out and we, we fulfill the will of God, we're a witness unto the saved and the unsaved, that is going to be an effective religion. And it's important for us to remember, we have to be doers and not hearers only of the word. Another great passage in James, it says, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man that beholds himself in a mirror. For he beholds himself, and then he goes on his way, straight away forgetting what manner of man he was. And it goes on to say that a doer of the Lord's work will be blessed in his deed. And I know we're not in the routine right now, but if we strip away the routine of coming to church on Sunday at 2 p.m. in a familiar place, we take that away. What do we have left? And that's something to reflect upon. The way we conduct ourselves at church with our praise and our zeal for the Lord should just be a continuation on how we conduct ourselves every other day of the week. And we need to remember that our deeds and our works have not made us holy. For we're not saved by our works. As we know, we've been saved through the sacrifice of Jesus. We've been made whole through his sacrifice. But we have been saved to a work, to a calling, to preach the gospel. And the Bible talks about a pure religion, being undefiled before God, being unspotted from the world. We've been, we've been made whole before God, and it's up to us to maintain that holiness by conducting ourselves according to the will of God. And this, this shouldn't feel like a chore. This should, be, it should come from a genuine desire to have a relationship with the Lord. As Paul says in Ephesians, he says, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See, the best, way, <clears throat> the best way not to do the things that we shouldn't be doing is to do the things that we should. And there's a few themes that go through from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Not to defile yourself. Not to worship false idols. Even in the present day, idols of riches. Remember the parable of the sower and the seed. When the seed was sown among thorns. And we're constantly reminded, encouraged to be prayerful. And not only in the spirit, but communing with the Lord on a daily basis. Meditating upon him. And if we go back to being undefiled, that is a big one, if you think about it. The, the only way we can remain undefiled is to be built up in the Spirit. It means to be pure. When God commanded for a sacrifice in the Old Testament, the sacrifice needed to be pure. And we read that we're saved through the precious blood of Christ. As a lamb that was spotless, without a blemish. And now, through the infilling of the Holy Spirit... We're rep represent representing Christ. So if we don't separate God's word from ungodliness or our worldly pursuits, then our witness or our testimony becomes worthless. We've been called unto our acts and our demonstration of faith to the Lord. And a great example of this in the Old Testament is um, Daniel. You've got Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are children of Israel. 
they were without blemish, and they were called before King Nebuchadnezzar to be teachers. Now the king, he had a daily provision of meat and wine for them, and this would be the best of the best stuff. But Daniel, he proposed that he's not going to He proposed he's not going to blemish himself. He's not going to defile himself with the king's meat and wine. And so here, regardless of the consequences, Daniel is being obedient unto the Lord. And the Lord blesses him for this. It says he he gave him wisdom and knowledge. And very importantly, he's being a testimony to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And as we heard last week about these guys, they refused to bow down to the king's golden image. And it's clear when you read through the story that they, all the, these three guys, they were encouraged by Daniel's obedience and his acts of faith towards the Lord. To the point where they said, if it be so, the God whom we serve will deliver us from the fiery furnace. So as to say, even if he doesn't show up, we're going to praise him right to the end. A true act of faith. Jesus says, let your light shine so that others may see your good works and may glorify God, which is in heaven. See, if we're, if we're filled with the Spirit, and we're truly walking in the Spirit, becoming religious and developing routine patterns of behavior shouldn't even be possible, because it's lifeless. And we read in the Word, the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. And He that raised Christ from the dead has given life to our mortal bodies. So we, don't, we have an obligation now, and it's not to the flesh anymore. Right? We have a convocation to the Lord. If we're obedient to the Lord, he will bless us. It says that in his word. He promises that. He will bless us, just as he did. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said he gave them wisdom, knowledge, and he gave them grace. Just as we read in the book of Lamentations, for by it's because of God's grace that we are not consumed. His compassion never fails. It's made new every morning. And what a blessing it is that we can say that God is our portion, our inheritance. Not an earthly portion that will perish, but one that endures forever. Praise the Lord. Let it be.